Howdy folks, um, I have got a 2010 Honda Pilot and uh, went out for a great camping trip last weekend and while I was driving on a dirt road um, suddenly some lights came on and they still haven't turned off. Tried fuses, um, let's see, tried checking cabling and weird stuff but nothing seemed to work. I'm going to show you what happens. When I turn the ignition, not, not starting the car, you know, I get lots of regular lights and that's all well and good. Um, I'll buckle my seatbelt here so you can see that that seatbelt light goes off. Um, and then when I start the car, you can see the problem is the VTM4 light, the exclamation point, the VSA light, and the ABS light. So I figured it's a problem somewhere within the system reading online. It sounds like maybe it's a speed sensor um, or some other component of the ABS system. So what I'm going to do is the trick that I've seen on another video of using um, a paper clip to jump the ODB sensor or the ODB port, which is down there, jumping pins four and nine and then I'm going to read the codes. So I'm going to put this in and then uh, we'll read some codes. Um, one thing about this paper clip, I don't know if you can see, but it was a little plastic coated one. So I actually uh, just ripped off the wire or the plastic at the end here. Um, I was worried about it being too thick, but this is kind of a, a thicker paper clip, not a thin one. You could also use a piece of solid wire, just something to bridge those two ODB connections. ODB? OBD? <laughs> this is not an affiliated with the Wu-Tang Clan port. All right, here we go. Now this is the part that's kind of hard to see. So I'm here, that's just a brake controller. I'm here, I should. All right, now here's the part that's pretty hard to see. So I'm, uh, it's the ODB port, OBD, onboard, onboard diagnostic port is underneath here. Um, and really it's, this is the hardest part of the whole process was getting to, um, the, the connector, um, which is down underneath there and it's really, you can't really see it very well, but that's pin four and pin nine. Um, and you want to make sure it's in there nice and solid. Okay. Now here we are, we're going to put the key in the ignition, and we're going to take a look for that ABS, and you saw that ABS light went off, but now it's back on, but it's blinking. And this is the really important part, is to read that blinking. One, it's long and short, so it's doing some codes. So I've been talking, so I missed that one, but we're going to start from the next one. So here's pause, one long, one, two, three, four, five, five short, so that's 15, then one, two, three, four, five, six, one short, so 61. So that means the ABS system is throwing codes 15 and 61. And I'll leave this here for a little bit so you can see. Yep, that was 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or sorry, 61. One, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see there's lots of other blinking happening here. So let's see, the TPMS is throwing a code too. So let's see what that is. One, two, one, one. One, one, two, three, 13. One, one, two, three, four, five, 15. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventeen. One, one, two, three, four. I, oh gosh, man, TP. Wow. Okay. Well, 
that's throwing a lot of different codes. Makes me a little nervous. Tire pressure monitoring system? That one wasn't even a light that was coming on. VTM4 is, I guess, just blinking regularly. Notice it says no on the odometer. Well, I think this is the ABS problem. That's what I'm going to solve. So I'm going to turn off the car. And you'll see, I'm going to pull that, pull that paper clip out. And then when I start the car, you know, it still gives me all the lights. The car still starts, but it's not throwing those codes. And the reason I did the paperclip thing is, you know, I was going to buy a scan tool, and then I'd read that you can't even, a scan tool won't necessarily even tell you all the codes for the ABS system, because that's a separate system. So, anyway. Oh, look, there's some skaters. Hi, skaters. Um, anyway, that looks, skaters with masks, that's cool, you know, responsible citizens. Um, so anyway, that's why I was like, well, I'll just try this paperclip thing and it worked this is like I said a 2010 pilot all right so now I'm gonna I don't know what I'm gonna do let's see I'll probably show you how I found those codes so I do a Google search and uh, get for Honda ABS codes and uh, you know you can find a bunch of different images that'll show a bunch of different things um, this is one that I found that showed me what I needed I'm really looking at that 15 code um, that 61 you know, I'm not really sure what uh, low ignition voltage means, but, you know, speed sensor, since I had been driving in the desert, I was kind of like, eh, sounds like there could be a mechanical problem. So I wanted to check that out. All right. So after finding out that it was the right rear speed sensor that the, that code is, I, uh, I kind of climbed under here and I looked to trace the speed sensor from the wheel and comes along to here and you can kind of see that frayed wire and when I moved it around with my hand I can't move my other hand under there because it's I can't get it out of there under there um, but I could kind of see copper wire so I'm pretty sure that that's where I have a fault in the speed sensor cable so not even the sensor itself that's in the wheel but the cable itself now folks online were saying well you know you don't really want to patch it up because water can get in there and then it's going to rust the cable and so that's not going to work so i ordered a whole speed sensor to put in to replace the whole thing from the wheel all the way to this orange connector up there so i'm going to pull that clip out of there and then undo these bolts that hold the the cabling to the knuckle um, there's a couple of them, and then replace the whole sensor, and hopefully that works. Now, it's possible that you could do this from underneath the car. Definitely would be easy to do if you had it jacked up. I'm going, or on a lift, I'm going to pull this wheel off, and then jack it up, and then hopefully just be able to have enough access there. I'm going to put a jack stand under there just in case the jack fails. I always like to feel confident that the car is not going to come down on me. So now that i got the tire off, the wheel off, you can see here is... Doo -doo -doo, maybe you can see... That's where the wheel speed sensor goes into the hub. And then this is the cable that... Um, doo -doo -doo, lines up here and then down and up there and here's a better shot of that where I think the fray that's causing my problem is um, so I'm gonna try to take it out and uh, put it uh, put the new one in I had heard that some of these might be rusty um, and like you have to use liquid wrench on them, but this guy right here on the hub came out easy and Then there's tracing the line Can't quite see it, but then the next one is just right here And then it goes to this one, which is a little hard to get to because this is kind of bent back So I'm gonna see what getting to that one is like um, and that's it. I'm going to go get the new part so I can see if I'm ready for it. Well, it was all going so well. Um, let's see. I got that bolt out. I got that bolt out. I got... I even got that bolt out. Oh, where is it? Oh, up down there. 
Um, however, well, I got to get that clip out, which I'm going to do. However, this, where the actual sensor goes into the hub is stuck there. So hopefully I'm going to get a screwdriver. It's just going to pop right out. It's just going to pop right out. It was actually kind of tricky. Um, let's see. There's like a little lever pusher thing that kind of puts this, pulls this up and disengages um, from this pin. But, you know, you can see there's a little gunk in there. So I actually, this is the only time I've had to get under the car to actually get my arms up there to pinch and pull at the same time, but it did came, come off. Well, I was pretty nervous that that was gonna get stuck in there and break off. So I grabbed a pair of pliers and just put it on there and pulled and uh, yankety yank, there it is. So hopefully, I'm going to put the new one back in and we'll be good. Something I always like to do is just kind of compare the two parts and make sure, yep, they look the same. Those are the same. The connector is the same. See, it's, I had to break, I had to pull this out of the body. So it snapped this clip, but I only did that after I looked and saw the new part and saw, oh, yep, there's a new push-in clip right there. So I knew I was going to be good. This did not come with bolts, so definitely make sure you keep the bolts. These are the two shorties that went on the frame of the car, and then this is the long one that goes into the hub. Now that I've pulled the old part, you can see this is that section that I, I think is causing the problem. You can't quite see you can almost make out on there that there is some copper showing so I'm hoping it's that frayed wire that was causing the problem but we'll see and again you know I could have maybe tried to patch that and 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 taped it over but this is a pretty burly cable and considering it's riding underneath the bottom of the car you really want it protected and you want it sealed so that was my thinking for shelling out the 60 bucks well, I got that first one in place. It's nice because it's got that little kind of tooth thing there to tie into here so you know exactly which way to put it on there. Um, for this job, I would definitely say having a 12-inch extendo rod is handy. Um, but I don't think, yeah, I guess it's pretty, it's necessary to get to that one or at least like a 4-inch or 6-inch to get into that one. Okay. Um, this one down below is super handy too because it's got this um, that little pin right there So you can see exactly what angle this is supposed to sit against the frame at so that's nice um, I guess maybe while I'm down here I'm just gonna pin So hopefully this is just gonna clip into this orange thingy like that You know just make sure it's nicely seated and then that it's just gonna push into there and then so that's secure I'm just gonna come back and tighten up this bolt um, I just tightened up the three bolts uh, another little one just to make sure that they were nice and tight at this point I'd like to give a shout out to my Durabilt soccer socket set that I'm pretty sure I purchased sometime around 1996 um, I think at Target? Anyway, this thing has held up for so many um, repairs, and I will say that a great socket set without a great case is not a good socket set. The case is what makes it so easy. Look how sturdy this thing is. It holds everything in place. I've knocked this thing around, thrown it around. It still holds everything I need, which is so great, as opposed to just like loose stuff sitting around. Something I'm sure everybody knows, but you know, you tighten them in a uh, star pattern, so just moving one, skipping one as you go around. Car is still jacked off, <laughs> I didn't say that, uh, off the ground, and so uh, I can just spin them on here, I'll tighten them with the wrench, drop it on the ground, tighten them one final time to make sure they're really tight. Alright YouTubers, here we are, the moment of truth. Will it have worked? Key is in the ignition. I'm there. Starting the car. Oh my god. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> I gotta admit, I'm kinda surprised. There it is. It works. There's no crazy lights. Alright. Mission accomplished. See ya.
Alright, um, now here's just uh, the tools that I needed to replace it. So there it is. That is the rear, right rear vehicle speed sensor. I had to order this from Honda. My local dealership actually had it at a pretty good price compared to like an online place and I like being able to return it if it wasn't the problem or I don't know. It was 60 bucks. Um, I used this pair of pliers to just kind of pull the thing out when it was a little stuck in the hub. Um, I, yeah, I guess I, I kind of used the screwdriver to pry that little plastic, orange plastic clip to free that connector. Um, didn't use that guy. Sorry, buddy. Um, and then I used just a 10 millimeter socket on a 12 inch extension on a ratchet. That was it. There's the jack stand I bought at Walmart for 10 bucks. Um, I don't support Walmart, but I did buy that jack stand. Okay.